This is the much-awaited 2023 Honda XL750 Transalp. This nine and a half grand all-round adventure tourer kicks out around about 90 horsepower and 75 newton meters from its parallel twin 755cc engine. But is it any good? That is a really, really nice ride, folks. You see, this is a really bumpy road. This is really quite steep. Can't talk, try not to die. Oh, and yeah, we did overtake a Ferrari back there. Let's just chalk that one up. <clears throat> Down in the okay, first off, let's get the boring stuff out the way. Motorways. Well, the Honda Transalp, you know, okay, it looks like an off-roader, but I think we need to be a bit realistic here. The vast majority of people that are going to buy this bike are going to be looking for a commuter, a tourer, an all-round sort of bike. The chances of this thing actually seeing dirt are fairly remote. I am going to do a little bit of green laning on it. Very light green laning, so don't get excited. But I think we all realise the vast majority of these type of adventure bikes we're talking more cappuccino than crud. So what is it like out here on the motorways at the fast roads? Well, I'm doing the national speeds. I am six foot three, 20 stone. We all know this. I do like to sit upright in a bike. You know, I am I'm an ex-copper and I sit like one on a bike. I do tend to sit quite bolt upright. I like the peak lead style as well. And I gotta say that screen I'm feeling a little bit of the turbulence around the top of my helmet, but it's nothing drastic. I can feel a little bit of wind around my shoulders, but again, absolutely nothing to worry about. I've felt a lot worse. For me, anyway, no issues here. None. I'm going to do probably about 20, 30 miles on the motorway, so I'll report back to you in a second. And wouldn't you believe it, Roadworks. Who'd have thought it in the UK? Roadworks on the M20, we're down to 50. But one thing that's come straight to the fore here, traction control. There is no traction control on this. I feel like a bit of a spoilt brat even mentioning it. But, you know, a lot of the bikes these days have traction control. However, this is a nine and a half grand bike. And it's a quality bike at that. Built on the foundations of the Hornet, which is uh, seven grand. So yeah, Honda do have to um, sort of scrimp and save in places. So there's no quick shifter, there's no... Did I say traction control? I meant cruise control. One thing that's come to the fore is there's no cruise control. And for this price bracket, nine and a half grand, I think it's safe to say that we can swallow that for that. You do notice it on these motorway stretches, but the throttle itself, it's lovely. It's very well balanced doesn't feel jerky at all. I'm sat here in sixth gear. Nice and easy just to hold the 50 odd mile an hour that you need. Again, when I was in the national stretches there, you can sit at that 70 odd mile an hour. It is no problem to maintain the speed. The mirrors themselves here on the motorway, they're actually giving me really good vision behind. Sometimes I find, being a big fat lump, sometimes I find the mirrors are quite hard. It's quite hard to get that view round either my shoulders or my gut. With some, of the, with some bikes, these, lovely, no problems there at all. It's too early to tell you about comfort, I'll do that later on in the day. I'm bored already, let's get off the motorway. Oh, that feels lovely in the turn. Nice little punch of speed there. Okay, a little bit of reserved ride in here in the 40s. Where am I going here? That looks confusing. So this wants me to go fourth exit. Sorry about this. I um, I amended the route that I'd done before on Cali Moto, and I think I've mucked up one of the waypoints. Oh well, let's just go with it anyway. Sorry, I'll be back in a second. I just need to change this. Sorry, people. Let me sort this out. Right, what have I done here? So hit pause, have a look at the route. Ah, yeah, look, see? So come off, it's taking us back to three and then back all the way here. So what I want to do is I want to delete that one. 
So just tap it, remove point, wash, and that will carry on through the rest of this route. Beautiful, simple as that. Oh, keep forgetting there's no quick shift up. Okay, what's she like in the roundabouts? Third gear. That feels lovely. Yeah, that feels really nice. But I tell you what, third gear's a nice gear to be in. It's nice and punchy. This is pretty much exactly the same engine that's in the Hornet, so 750cc twin. It's got about 90 horsepower and 75 newton meters of torque. But that is kicking in at around about nine and a half thousand revs, which is quite revvy for a, a twin. Now already it feels like it's got the low down grunt to make it nice and usable. But that higher, that higher rev rate for the peak torque, peak performance, suggests it's also going to be quite a nice revvy engine. Let's see. I'm liking this. Oh, into a 30. And down we go. Okay, fourth gear, 30 miles an hour. What's it like? Nice and easy to hold that. No problems at all. Let's try into third. Do you know what? I would say you're going to want fourth for, for cruising along at 30. If you're going to do 30, that is, obviously. Third, it's no problems, but um, just a little bit more reactive, obviously, than fourth gear. So if you want a comfort ride, whack it in fourth. Then it will trundle along at 30, no problem. Right, I'm bored of town riding. Let's get out on the... Let me hear you. That's right. Twisties! Oh! If we just take care of that for a second. This is fourth gear. Oh yeah, now, now, there we go. So between eight and a half, nine and a half. You can feel another little surge of power coming in. Let's just bring that down again. There we go, and we can relax. Yeah, there is a, a surge of power again at that sort of north of 8,000 revs. It's not, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna pull your, your, it's not gonna pull your arms out their sockets, but there's a definite, nice progressive, just like that. Nice little push of power there, higher in the revs. It's a nice engine. Honda are smashing it out the park at the moment with these mid-range bikes. You know, seven grand for the Hornet, nine and a half grand for this. You could tour two up on this comfortably. It's a nice big pillion seat, stay there, thank you very much. It's a nice big pillion seat on the back. Big grab rails as well for whoever's sitting pillion, you've got something to hang on to. They do do luggage for this, panniers. You, you must be able to get a top box. I've just come back from the Picos actually and I really wish I'd asked if I could take this over to the Picos. It would have been interesting to see what this was like comparing with, you know, the big hitter tourers that everyone brings, the GSs, the Triumphs. Uh, what did we have over there? We had a Multistrada. We even had a Maniac on a, <laughs> an H2, the naked one. What an awesome sounding bike that was. We had the Pan America, Milky, sorry mate, Milky, um, Milky ditched it on one of the bends on the last proper day. Did it admirably though, I've got to say, the man is a machine. But yeah, it would have been interesting to see what this was like. I wish I'd done that. I might see if I could um, take it on any of the other tours we've got coming up, either this year or next. Anyway, let's get it onto some proper twisties. Right then, there they are. Nationals! So we're just gonna do the camber run. Any of you down in the southeast, you'll know this road. Camber Sands, lid run. It's a bit of a mecca for the bikes. Lovely run. Lots of different types of road surface. Lots of different types of corners. It can be no traffic. It can be rammed with traffic. You take your ticket, you take your chance. I think it's a nice test for a bike, this. For a road bike, at least. Now, something I've noticed on the way down here is once you get out into the country roads, and obviously the riding gets a little bit more spirited, 
I'm noticing it's quite noisy in the lid department. Noisier than what I'm used to, I've got to admit. So motorway stuff, it seemed fine. But once you get out and about and you start moving around on the bike a little bit, yeah, then that's when I'm starting to notice a little bit more wind turbulence around the helmet. I will be quite refrained on here. I've seen more than my fair share smashes on this road. Sometimes they're not pretty. You get a lot of tourists along here. You get a lot of people just dilly-dallying. So choose your overtakes wisely. Okay, we're up and running. The bike feels lovely, it really does. Feels nice and planted. Suspension's a little bit sort of spongy, but then I am 20 stone. The suspension is not set up for me. Talking of suspension, you can only adjust preload. I think that was the same as the Hornet. You can only adjust preload. But, you know, for a bike of this sort of budget range, it's by no means cheap suspension. Maybe once you're two up, you might start noticing it a bit more. Or one up if you're a big fat knacker like me. But it's not causing any issues in handling, for certainly for this level of riding. You know, if you're some Mark Marquez or Rossi out there, yeah, okay. But for us mere mortals, it feels fine. It's a really nice bike to ride. I'm really enjoying this bike. feel really windy, really quite noisy. I don't think it's overly windy outside. I mean, it is a windy little coastline, this, down at Camber. But you can see the flags. Yeah, the flags are fluttering a wee bit. Nothing horrendous, though. Okay, coming into Camber itself, get lots of traffic in and out the beach along here. I think it's still a national, though, weirdly. Yeah, that is really blustery now. You can see on those flags, that's probably why then. It is actually quite a windy day. Okay, take that back. We'll give you that little Honda. Little Honda, it's not a little Honda. It feels a good sized bike, this. But the Hornet did as well. It didn't feel like a small bike. But 750cc, it's not small, is it? But this, in this day and age, where we're just seeing bigger and bigger and bigger cc'd engines, I suppose this is mid-range now, isn't it? Mind you, I suppose 600cc were always sort of mid-range. So I'll shut up. Again, what do I know? Very little, it seems. Do you know, fourth gear is a really nice, versatile gear. You can trundle along at your 30 miles an hour, but it'll also see you well north of the Nationals and some. Really nice, versatile gear. A bit like third is on the big tractor, on the big GS. Fourth seems to be the nice utilitarian gear for the Transalp. Right, come on, get me back out on those nationals. There they are, nationals! Sync them up, one, two, three. A nice turn of speed there. Plenty of grunt there for the overtakes. Quick splurt of the throttle, get the overtake done. And then just roll off. It's a golf course here, so you get people crossing the road. Right, we're all right, let's get back on the power. with a light bit of trail braking, get around this corner. That is lovely. That is a really, really nice ride, folks. You see, this is a really bumpy road. Suspension soaking it up, giving you lots of feel. End out with a bit of light trail braking, looking for any gravel, not seeing anything there, happy days. Just watching for gravel on the exit, there's nothing there from the lay-by. Beautiful! More traffic. Nice bit of a straight coming up. Once we go around this right though, just hold back, see if we can get the overtake. Beautiful. Nice! That was a lovely ride. I really, really am enjoying this bike. I'm gutted. I've had this bike for, oh God, almost three weeks now. This is the first time I've been able to get out on it.
it's just gone crazy at the moment. I'm just so busy with my tours. So I had a week over in the Picos. Well, the first week I had this. What was I doing the first week I had this? I think I just got back from a tour. So I was trying to get a video edited, trying to get the podcast back up and running. So that first week I just sacrificed, put my head down and edited. Then I was away in the Picos. I then came back from the Picos and it was straight to the ABR. Fantastic event. Absolutely awesome. Can't wait for next year. And then again, it's just been edit, 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 trying to get some content out there for you. And the bike goes back next week. So I was like, God, I've got to get out. Really sorry, Honda, if you're watching. Break down the third. Even the brakes feel nice on this. I don't actually know what the brakes are. I'll tell you, I'll put it on the screen now. But they're lovely. They're not snatchy, they just feel... Mm. It's a really, really well put together bike, this. Right, let's get out in some more twisties. This is Rye, by the way. And if you're ever coming to Rye, you do a left at this roundabout and it takes you to where the sort of the more famous bike meet is. That's a nice right there as well. It takes you to Military Road. That's a bit of fun, that one. Anyway, twisties! <laughs> Even with this stock exhaust, that engine's got a nice little growl to it, doesn't it? Imagine that with the aftermarket. Well, the Hornet had the aftermarket can, didn't it? And it made a big difference. Just slow down for this lady. Into 30. It's genuinely a great bike. Genuinely a great bike. Ooh, right, so what are the differences between this and the Hornet? Well, essentially it's the same bike, but one of the main differences is this subframe. They've sort of strengthened it and lengthened it to allow you to get, so as to accommodate the extra weight from having luggage, pillion, all that sort of stuff. That's about it. I think the seat height's slightly higher on this. It's 850 millimeters. So you would say it's quite a tall bike. But obviously, if you're a normal person of normal height, such as me, you know, normal people are at least six feet, then it's no problem at all. Username Kate's currently throwing things at the screen. Yeah, if you're a short arse, then you're going to struggle, I think, with this. Maybe you're going to have to do the bum shuffle, you know, hang the old cheek over the side, and then you should be all right. The suspension is really nice and uh, soft, so once you put any body weight on this, it will sink a little bit. But it is a tall bike. Can you get a low seat? That I don't know. I'll put it on the screen now if you can or can't. Right, let's get out of this 30 and enjoy these roads. Come on. Yeah, national, 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 national. Is that them? Is that them hidden in the bush? It is. Hiya! Beautiful. Lovely road, this. Bumpy. Okay, let's just keep it semi reasonable. Don't want all you Nigels having a heart attack. Yeah, we're doing 60 round miles an hour. Sorry, Nigel. <laughs> I really like this bike. In the cage. You can't. Surprising. I'm going to regret saying this, aren't I? But surprisingly little traffic. For the southeast of England at the weekend. Surprisingly little traffic. <laughs> These roads are shocking. Aren't they terrible? Road surface. Gee whiz. Whoa, feeling the suspension sort of quite lumpy, uh, quite lurchy there. It's starting to do this. As you pick the speed up on these sort of backcountry roads, yeah, that suspension didn't really know what to do with me on it. Just started to get this feel. Tend to notice that in um, sort of the lower end suspension. Well, I do anyway, probably because I'm such a fat knacker, you know, my body weight pushes standard suspension. Especially when you add a little bit of pace to it and on these sort of backcountry bumpy roads. That's when you start noticing these things. It's not unbearable. Didn't feel like the back was going to lose contact at any point, but you notice it in the ride. 
and down to 30. Okay, so that was fairly aggressive braking. Felt nice and progressive through the lever, that. No sudden grabs or anything. It was good. I'm going to say it again, folks. I like this bike. But I really like the Hornet, so that's no surprise. Come on, let's get back out on the twisties. There they are, folks. And come up, one, two, three. Nationals! Okay, let's get the speed down a little bit. So what's the sort of competition for this bike then? Well, it's going to be your uh, Tanieri 700. That's got to be the main one at the moment. That seems to be the uh, sort of Vogue bike for some. Not ridden it, the Yamaha Tanieri. Tanieri, Tenere, whatever you call it, however you say it. I've not ridden that, so I couldn't tell you. Sorry. Go and ask Lamb Chops at TMF. They've all ridden everything. Uh, what else is a V-Strom? Again, couldn't tell you. I have not ridden a V-Strom. I know plenty of people that have, but I've never ridden one yet. It's on my list. Speaking of Suzuki's, I'm getting the beast back on the road. Oh, Ollie from Premier Motorcycle Repairs. Ollie used to be the mechanic that used to work on my bike way back in the day when I first bought it. Well, he's now set up on his own and he's now helping me. I'm saying helping me. Ollie's doing everything. I'm literally making the tea and filming. But we're getting the beast back on the road. So that's a series that will be coming very soon. Cannot wait to tour on her again. I love that bike. Anyway, sorry, yes. So co competition for this. What else is there? You tell me, let me know in the comments. Whatever it is, I've probably not ridden it anyway. But I'd have thought for this price bracket, nine and a half grand, there's not gonna be much that rivals it. Now, I've been doing a little bit of um, research off camera in this bike. And I can tell you, it is more than capable of having a play. This thing is fun. It handles beautifully. It really is nice to ride. The only issue I think so far, there's two issues so far. One is that sort of wallowy feeling in the suspension when you up the pace a little bit on bumpier roads. And the other one is the seat. Now I don't know who designs Honda seats. But perhaps, perhaps, either they need to change that or that person needs to develop a different way of making seats. Because like the Africa Twin, this seat is lovely for the first 20 minutes, half hour. And then after that, it becomes a bit of a torture device. With me, it seems to work at the top of my ass cheeks and then work its way down into the back of my legs. Don't know why. I don't know how, but that's what happens to me. But other than that, bike feels fine. Nice wide bars, pegs feel a nice height. All the controls here are nice and easy to reach. Oh, and yeah, we did overtake a Ferrari back there. Let's just chalk that one up. <clears throat> so the helmet camera decided not to work here, but basically I'm gonna witter on about the fuel tank. The Transalp comes with a 16 litre tank. You would think it would be 20 litre for the touring bike, but no, it's 16 litres. Honda claim you're going to get around about 260 to 80 miles to a tank. I used half a tank here and I'd done around about 70, 75 miles. So by my reckoning for that kind of riding, you're going to be looking at around about 160, maybe 180 miles to a tank. Obviously, if you take it easier, you'll get more. But where's the fun in that? It's quite a broad tank, so come on Honda, bump it up to 20 litres. Ooh, something I've not talked about. Engine modes. Right, it's got engine modes. Now I'm running in Sport, which is pretty much maximum everything. Maximum power, uh, I think that's actually lightest engine braking, lightest tra traction control and ABS. Just push this mode button over here, big chunky buttons. That moves it to standard, that brings it down to three quarters power, uh, two thirds engine braking, two thirds traction control, and full ABS. Push it again into rain mode, it's minging. Why? Wow, I don't just know. Push it again, you've got gravel, which is like your one touch off road setting. That's the one I'll be testing shortly. And then you push it again, and you've got user. And that's exactly what you think. You can predefine everything you like there. 
you can change everything and have it as one convenient automatic setting just push that mode button into user and bang you've got what you like whilst i'm on the topic of settings pretty much standard across most of the hondas these days it's the same sort of generic dash and button orientation certainly amongst the likes of the hornet africa twin this one i think the cb500x that's similar speaking of cb500x basically the front is the cb500x if you look at it the headlight and everything that's straight off the cb500 but yeah all the buttons here all the settings it's a nice sort of setup orientation of all the buttons very easy very very intuitive no complaints there from me on the topic of the dash you can actually change the orientation or the layout of your dials and everything on there very easy to do so you can have a play see which ones you prefer the dash itself is really easy to read you can change it from the light background to a dark background however you like personally i like the light background only time that's an issue is in really bright sunshine not really an issue too much here in the uk although we're having a bit of a oh we're having a bit of a stonker at the moment aren't we with the weather so you're riding along and all of a sudden it starts to get a little bit agricultural push the mode button whack her into gravel and you're ready to tackle the mongolian steps well not quite because obviously you need to stand up now i know this is going to look like nothing to all of you off-roaders out there but this is really quite steep and i'm going to sit down because i hate standing up or going off-road wow this is really quite oh that's quite loose i know it's going to look nothing right let's get a bit of speed up can't talk trying not to die what was it i brought up here the last time i think it was the super adventure that was quite deep gravel in places the back was spinning loads but it'll do it you can't see how steep that hill is it is steep that's it that's the sum total of off-road i'm doing for you i'm off to morocco believe it or not later in this month on the gs's it's bloody look people are just dump their sh everywhere scumbags this is an acquired taste in the color scheme this is the black they do a gray one which are both pretty similar really uh, for me the color of choice is the white blue and red one that is lovely would i recommend this bike to you 100 percent if you're in the market for a middleweight sort of tourer commuter do it all then definitely chuck your leg over the Transalp. Yet again, Honda have smashed it out the park. For the money, awesome bike. Give me your feedback in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Have you taken one out? Share if you can, it all helps the algorithm. But anyway, keep doing your thing. Look after those that you love. Get on out there whenever you can, but most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!